Hey guys, welcome back. Um, driving over one town over to go feed this morning and uh, figured I'd do a quick little video showing off one of my trucks and just also giving some opinions on what I think are the best bang for your buck vehicles you can buy right now. And that would be anything, call it 99 to 07 classic GM trucks, whether they be Tahoe, Suburban, Yukon, XL, um, or 1500 through 3500 HD pickups. Uh, the one that I'm driving right now is a 2005 GMC Yukon. Um, I bought it as a, I'm trying to think what I bought it for when I got it. It was October of 2020. I bought it at Ritchie Brothers for $1,100 with 280,000 miles on it. Since then, sorry, I think when I bought it, I had just kind of planned on using it as a plow vehicle. Um, and it ended up becoming my daily driver. Uh, I drove this thing every day for about a year, year and a half until fuel prices went crazy. Then I ended up getting that Prius that you've seen in a few videos. I got that for like three grand, which at the time was a steal, but it was when fuel was like 279 a gallon before it jumped up to mid to high fours, at least in my area. Um, and then this thing got parked again. But currently, it has 315,600 miles on it. And about two weeks ago, it actually just completed a, well, half of a 2,200-mile trip. We, we towed a trailer down to Georgia from Northern Illinois with this truck um, and picked up two 6.7s that I bought as flips and a horse trailer so we towed an empty 24 foot trailer down with this and then threw the through this truck on the trailer and towed it home with one and the horse trailer with the other and it was flawless um i don't know if i can actually flip this but this truck has 315,000 miles and as far as I know, it's a factory sealed engine and we're still making north of 40 pounds of oil pressure. It has your typical LS issues, manifold leaks when it's cold, um, lifter tick, which is a new thing, but I might just try and shut that up with some thicker oil. Um, it's always burned oil. I have a tendency to think that it needs a PCV valve uh, it smokes pretty bad when you start it up. It's like a three to five second puff of oil burning smoke. So it needs some attention, but the truth of the matter is I don't give it the attention it deserves because it just keeps going either way. Um, but back to the main point, when I left my normal job and incorporated and started doing this full time, I sold a 6.7 power stroke that I had and replaced it with a 2004 three quarter ton Chevy. And that truck had a six liter gas engine in it with a 4080 trans behind it. And that truck built my business to the point where I could start going up in value of daily driver. I had a third gen 6.7 Cummins. Um, I had a third gen 5.9 Cummins. I've had a, was it 04? Yeah, I had an 04 LLY single cab. I, I worked my way back up to the point now where I have another 6.7, which is, was kind of my, one of my goals was to replace the truck that I had an $800 a month payment on with something that I owned cash. But 
I'm not going to get into too many of the technical specifics on these trucks. I'm not a mechanic by trade. I'm no expert. But what I can tell you is anything 485360 from that era before DOD, before any of the active fuel management stuff, the cylinder deactivation, they're bulletproof. They're awesome engines. They make decent power. Um, the chassis are good. Some people don't like the independent front suspension. I've never had an issue. Most of my trucks have plowed without any concerns. Um, some of the plow trucks, we've cranked the torsion bars on. Some of them have had the timberin. Uh, that's essentially just it replaces your factory bump stop with something that's like four inches tall instead of two inches. And I think it's progressive in some capacity as far as how it allows it to be squished, for lack of a better way of putting it. But they're just, they're good, solid, reliable trucks. And for me, if you can go out and get something that's decent with 150 to 200,000 miles on it, and you can own it for five or six grand, and you're okay with taking a little bit longer to get moving, and dealing with a four-speed versus, you know, a lot of these newer trucks have, well, Ford's had the five, GM never really had five except for the Allison, um, but, you know, from the 4L80s to the 6L90s, and then now these 10 speeds in these trucks, like, they're awesome, but at a price, and these things will just go and go and go without really any, uh, major headaches, and there's so many tips and tutorials on YouTube for how to fix the major issues. Intake manifold gaskets, that's an hour job. Uh, exhaust manifolds, the bolts pop and, uh, you know, you start to get manifold ticks. You can either get the Monroe or one of those fix-it companies. It's like 26 bucks on Rock Auto. You can get a little bracket uh, that... Uh, bolts to the back of the head and holds the manifold and if it gets worse than that pull the wheel off pull the inner fender well out grab yourself a welder and start welding nuts on um if i ever and i don't really have many of these trucks anymore just because they're aging out but if i ever have to do manifold bolts on one i'll i'll make a video showing how to do it it's not hard uh and you have pretty good success of getting all the bolts out without issue. Um, the 4L60s and the 1500s, everybody kind of knows the story on those, but this truck has at least 200,000 miles on the trans. Since I've owned it, it tows regularly, and like not like a jet ski, like it tows like a mini excavator on an equipment trailer. It plows, and this is a short wheelbase Yukon. This isn't anything crazy. This is coil sprung rear. Like it's it's, it's a soccer mom truck and it does everything most people would need it to do and I don't know I just like these trucks there's definitely good options um, the 8.1s are great especially in the pickups where you get an Allison behind them um, you gain that extra one or two gears depending on the year um, all the diesels my opinion are decent lbz's are taxed just because of what they are i've never had an issue with lly's in stock configuration or lb7s with the advancements that they're making with the injectors now as far as like reman replacements so there's really no way to go wrong and whether it be a diesel or a, a gas-powered one, I don't think I've ever had to give any more than five or six grand, especially if you're just looking for cheap, reliable transport. Sorry, my uh, video cut out because my phone ran out of storage, but um, going back to what I was saying, if you just need cheap, reliable transportation, these trucks are great. Um, you know, the I've also not had any issues with the 07 to 13s, the GMT 900s. Um, some people don't like the 
six-speed trans is in them they're not as strong as a 4080 but we've got one with over 300,000 miles on it of fleet use before we got it that plows and tows and does all the things and that truck's fine um obviously with the 1500s the five threes had the active fuel management and stuff like that but the four three v6s the four eights and the six o's are still normal and they're awesome um even lmms like an lmm duramax is pretty much an lbz with dpf and some more emissions components on it but they're they're awesome trucks too and shit you can get those for i think i've paid under 5,000 bucks for some of those at this point with higher miles. Um, outside of that, you know, I'm not super brand specific. I hate Dodge gassers. Um, I see so many of them go through sales with cam failures or lifter failures or some sort of, you know, undisclosed engine noise. And, you know, it's, it's a good chassis they're good trucks especially post third gens like later for like call it i don't know if they did the refresh so like 2013 and up uh when they went from dodge ram to just ram being its own brand i think they fixed a lot of the electrical issues that they had my th one of my third gens was like plagued with electrical issues um but I just, I won't touch any of those with a 5.7 or a 6.4 Hemi. The Cummins engines, in my opinion, are good. Uh, I've never had any engine-related issues. If you start tuning them and doing a bunch of stuff like that, you're, you know, you might start asking for trouble. But for the most part, they're fine. Um, I've had and continue to own 7.3 Power Strokes. Those are good, but you're paying a diesel tax and whether you need that or not is up for you to decide. Uh, I've had a couple of 6.0 power strokes. I've never had any major issues. However, I did sell one and not that long after the truck was getting head gaskets and that truck was completely stock. Whether it was diagnosed correctly or not, I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised. 6.4s avoid like the plague. Uh, I like 6.7s. Um, I think I own over uh, between four six sevens right now i own well over like 1.2 million miles accumulated between those trucks and they're great um when they break they break expensive though so know what you're getting into there's a reason why every day running around doing normal stuff i'm driving a 1100 yukon instead of a expensive six seven so uh, one more would be, if you're needing the power, would be three valve Super Duty with the V10. Um, later ones, I don't know if it was 05 and newer or 08 and newer when they went to the 6.4 body style, but those got 5Rs and that's an awesome trans. You got a, you got the V10 power with a five speed trans. You put the right gear in the back and they're towing machines, especially if it's not something you need regularly. Um, you can justify that if you got a loaded trailer behind you, you can justify that seven, eight miles per gallon. Cause I'll be honest with you, you're not going to do much better than 10 or 11 in a six, seven loaded to hell either, unless you're taking it real easy. So there's plenty of different options. Uh, I think bang for your buck kind of wrapping this up. If you're trying to start a business, you need to do some towing, you need something that you can count on every day, 99 or 2000 to 07 Classic GM. That's always been my go-to. Um, they're cheap, they're reliable, uh, parts are plentiful in junkyards. I have a good friend of mine that all he does is part out these trucks, so if I need a motor by chance or transfer case or anything like that, it's a phone call away and they've been around for so long. Any issues that you're going to run into are pretty well known at this point. And they're just, you know, they're, they're tried and true and they're good trucks. So 
that's just my two cents. Um, thanks for watching. If you disagree, if you have any other suggestions, love to hear them. Thanks for watching. Bye.